thing we're going to be tying is Doug's foam <laughs> mouse. That's, uh, I don't know of anybody else that ties it regularly, so I guess you could call it my signature mouse or my signature fly. And it's really not that difficult. The, the real clue is the thread. Now I use a uh, rod wrapping thread. I use a size E because I like the real heavy. But you can get away with a knot three or, or an A size. And the reason you want the thicker thread is because when you're cinching down on the neck, uh, you can have a problem uh, cutting the foam in half, especially around the bottom part of it because you're stressing it so hard at that point. So uh, I'll tie one real quick here and then we can tie one together. So I start out and I wrap all the way to the tip of the point. And the reason I only wrap that far is because once you put the tail on, you don't want the thread to show on the tail. You want the tail to look like it's actually coming out of the body and not tied to the hook. Yeah, I know, but it's got a lot of light. So anyway, I go to the tip, and then uh, whoop, got all my stuff. And then I put uh, some head set on there because I want this fly to last a long time. Because you're fishing for a very aggressive fish when you use it. Uh, it's usually either a brown trout or a bass, <clears throat> large mouth or black bass or. The ones that are predators, they usually prey on these little mice anyway. And then, the next thing we put on is the tail. Now, you people know about the recipes when you see them in books, why the things are in the order that they're in, in the recipe. And the reason is, the first thing in the recipe is usually the hook or the size of the hook, because that's the first thing you put in your vise. And then as it goes down the recipe, it's supposed to be the stuff that you tie in next. And if the person that made up the recipe does it correctly, then that's what you do. It's that it, you can always follow a recipe and know when to tie a certain item in. It doesn't necessarily mean that will be the way you use it, but that's the way you want to tie it in. All right, so I make the tail about the length of the shank. And, it, you know, if it's a little longer or a little shorter, it really doesn't make any difference. It's just an estimate. Because if you find mice that all have the same length tail, then they're probably not wild. Because they lose part of their tail from predators. Now, always use a heavy-duty pair of scissors when you're cutting leather because they'll dull your real fine scissors really quick. They're almost as bad as cutting wire. Now, I wrap back, crossing over what I wrap forward. I use a wide spiral wrap to the front. And then I go in between the spirals coming back to the front again. And the reason for doing all this is because the tail is the <coughs> item on the fly that gets the most abuse. Because they'll come up and they'll grab at the tail to try to knock the mouse out or whatever. So it seems like whenever I look at the fly after I've fished it and got a couple of hits on it, the tail is all tore up. So, and then I put more head cement. This thing will probably almost sink with all the head cement that's on it. Now, on the body, this is 5 eighths by 2 inches. And what we want to do is we want to remove some of the material that it's going to go onto the hook because if we left it all on there then it would kind of uh, span out at the belly part of it. So we want it to kind of fit all the way around the hook. So what I do is I cut some off to make like a neck shape. And it's about a third 
of the width, and it doesn't have to be exact, but anyway, this is what you're going to end up with. And the furthest shoulder I have here, which is this side right here, I usually pour towards me because I want it to line up with the end or the point of the hook. And the reason for that is because I want to wrap back beyond that to make the body look around. And if you leave these open spots, then you have like a, a skirt hanging down. And what I do is I loose wrap over the top and then cinch down. And that's why you also need the wide thread is so you don't cut the foam while you're doing that. And then wrap all the way back to the barb. And then back up to the front again. And to check to see whether I got it on there right, you can just pull it to the front and you can see that it's rounded and that's what you're looking for is to be round and that the thread doesn't show on the tail. So once you do that, then normally I would put head cement on here and let it dry for a couple of minutes before I started wrapping the uh, cactus chenille for the body. Now the reason I use cactus chenille is the reason they use it on a gurgler is it traps air and when you're pulling it through the water it makes noise. So we'll attach that and I put it on the top. Really doesn't make any difference whether you put it on the top or the bottom because you're going to trim it once you get it there. Now as I put this on I also prune it towards the back so that it fills the body up because on a lot of this you'll find that you'll have kind of grooves in it because everything wants to lay down. So if you keep pruning it then it makes it stand up and then you get a fuller body. And you want as much fullness down on the bottom as you can get because you want it to trap the most air. Now, when you're tying in materials, one of the things that I have found that works really good is the in front and in back winding of the item. And then what that does is it locks it in between two pieces of thread. And it'll hold it a lot better than if you just wound thread on it. And it takes a lot less to uh, actually. So now we have this, and this actually, if I fold this over, the body will be really plump on the top, and the sides will show. So what I do is I give it a haircut, and I just cut right straight across the top. And some of the cactus chenille is real bushy, and some of it is real thin. So if you find that the particular style that you have is thin, then you don't have to trim it on top. Okay, now I have the thread positioned about a quarter inch from the eye, and that's how I want the snout to be. So I pull it over and stretch it and hold it with my fingers and give it four real tight wraps so that you end up with the round body. Then you fold the lip back and fill in the space in a cone shape to give it like a snout. And that's another thing that's good about having the thicker thread. It's easier to fill this in and make a better looking head on it. And you can make this head as thick as you want. I don't like it too thick because, you know, thread's not cheap. So then I whip finish it, but you can actually use half hitches as long as you work it down the snout because you want it to not all be at the very end. Okay. And that basically is all the tying that you'll be doing. And once you, you put the head cement, oh, I cut that too short, on the snout or the face, And 
the longer you let this dry, the higher the ears will stand. And we won't wait too long. We'll go ahead and show you how to cut the ears. Okay. Now here's going to be difficult trying to keep it in the screen and show you what I'm doing. We want to cut the foam at a curve about an eighth of an inch beyond the eye of the hook. So you have about that much. You notice how, how it's just kind of curved forward? As soon as you cut it in the middle, if I can get it in the middle, you notice the ears pop right out. And if you have dried head cement there, they'll end up just like this. Now, what I do to make the ears round is I just keep cutting the corners off. Start and you cut the bigger corner and then you just trim those off. And it seems like the adjustable scissors seem to do this the best. So if you're going to be working with a lot of foam where you're cutting foam, you want to get a pair of uh, adjustable scissors. Because they seem to, you can adjust them so they cut the foam the way you want it to cut. And I hope this is getting in the picture. Yeah, without the lights. Getting to be fun. But you get the idea. And that's it. So it's really not a difficult fly to tie. Yeah. Alrighty.